Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles and today I want to show you my take on the Lottie dress by Christine Haynes. Now I have used this pattern in the past, uh, so I've made my mum a blouse in the past. Now from making that blouse I did figure out this, this pattern comes with so much ease, a lot of ease. And because I didn't want my dress to be humongous on me, like I didn't want that much ease. I mean I do want some. <laughs> but not excessively, you know. So I looked at the measurements that, that each size has and um, if I looked at my body measurements, it means I would have to make a size 14 and grade out to 16 at the hip. But then if you look at the finished garment measurements on the size 12, um, there is a bust of 43 and something inches. Uh, mine is 41, so there's enough ease there. And the hips, uh, it said 47 and something um, finished garment measurement and my hips are 43 to 44 depends on the day <laughs> if I'm squatting or not anyway so I gathered that if I just cut a straight size 12 I would totally fit in there with an e enough ease you know that I'd feel comfortable in so I went ahead and just cut a straight size 12 now I have filmed all the process of um, everything so <laughs> This is the next section of the video. You can go ahead and watch. This is the back piece of the Lottie dress, as you can see. And here is my waist dart that I added onto the back to give it some shaping and to avoid all that elastic business going on at the waist. So I do this on most of my patterns. Um, I like to have my back shaped. I don't like things just hanging off me. And it's an adjustment I easily make because I know what measurements I need to apply to the patterns. So first is if you measure yourself from your shoulders up here, discount that seam allowance of course. My measurement from there to my waist is 45 centimeters. And I know that because I measure myself all the time. So that is a standard measurement, the height of my waist, that's not gonna change if I gain weight or lose weight or whatever, my, you know, my, my basic shape will stay the same. So that is where I've um, placed that part of the dart there. So that is the height of the widest part that I'm gonna have on that dart. Now I chose to make this dart, um, let me see how much did I choose, three centimeters in depth. So I have three centimeters there and when I do it on the other side, that's immediately gonna take away six centimeters from the waist. So it won't bring it in that much, but it will bring it in enough for what I want. And then, um, so I mark one and a half to one side, one and a half to the other side. And then the length going up, um, in this case, I made it 15 centimeters going up and 12 going down. Now this is variable. You can do whatever, like as long as it's not like up to here, you know. <laughs> but I find 15 centimeters a sweet spot for me and 12 to 15 going down. I just randomly did 12 this time. So that is how I got that dart at the back and I'm gonna apply that to my pattern. Now the other thing I did with this, because um, I'm gonna play and do a hack with the bottom bit. So I chopped the pattern off there. I didn't print the whole pattern. I didn't wanna waste that much paper. So I have this extension, which is just another piece of paper that will go right there to extend this if I want to make the dress just a, like a length, a, a longer length above the knee but without hacks at the bottom, just you know straight down. So this pattern piece I'm going to use in the front and the back because they're both the same width, you know, so I can apply that. And that's why I put the back and front Lottie dress bottom part extension size 12, that's where the fold goes and that is how my pattern looks in case I want to make a version that's just normal. On the top I've just typed in half circle skirt calculator and you'll find many apps. Um, I like this one easycalculation.com and it appears there, circle skirt calculator. So I'm going to press there and then here you get options for, um, then you have to scroll the three quarters, half, a quarter circle skirt. Anyway, I want half circle skirt. So I'm going to check that one. So the circumference around my whole bottom of that uh, Lottie dress is 125 centimeters, but because that half circle um, flounce is gonna stretch a wee bit, I'm gonna do it five centimeters smaller 
So I'm just going to pull 120 centimeters. And the length that I want for the skirt is 40 centimeters. So calculate 37.56 uh, radius. And how much fabric do I need to do this flounce? 79 centimeters. So um, that is uh, what I do on this uh, flounce to get what I want. So I round up 37 and a half. I can't measure 37.56 centimeters. So that's how I um, calculate the, the flounce. The Lori dress has a dart that is slanted slightly upwards. So if I choose any dart here um, and find the tip of it, and then follow the line, there is a two centimeter drop. So it's climbing from here to there in uh, two centimeters upwards. So because I want to lower the dart and keep that same shape, that is why that dart looks slanted. So all I did was measure from my shoulder, discounting seam allowance, down 31 centimeters, which is my bust height, which is lower than this bust height, of course. <laughs> Uh, in this case, it's about three centimeters, size 12 there to that. So I've lowered it three centimeters and I've just transferred that same dart three centimeters down. So it's got the same width, five centimeters, everything the same. So you know that shape there? Well, I've got to transfer that shape down. So what you do there is you close the dart on the paper and then I trued up that line. So when I'm going to cut it now, you're going to see it's going to take the same shape it had originally. So that sort of thing like that. So when I close this dart there and cut everything, you see it looks nice and straight there. But when you open it, you have that different shape there, see? And if you look at the pattern piece, originally it keeps that same shape. So all I did was bring that dart down. I'm going to do a hack on this Lodi top, well I only cut up to the top version, so, um, but measuring this hits me uh, just around, the, a little below the hip, so I've just cut a curved hemline there, I've just freehand done that, and now under here I'm going to add a peplum, a half circle skirt peplum, and I'm hoping I have enough fabric for that or else I'm going to be in big trouble. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'll see if that's going to work. I had just enough fabric. I mean, I had scraps there left, but basically my radius, so pretend the fabric is still there. This is the fold. That's the selvage. It's folded just once, you know. So I measured from the corner to there, 37 and a half, 37 and a half, 37 and a half, you know, and that gave me that radius. And then from there, I measured my length that I wanted, that was 40 centimeters. So 40, 40, 40, and over there, there's 42. <laughs> so there's only one seam there, and I'm gonna put that on uh, like a side seam. The rest is just gonna be on the fold. So I'm going to attach this peplum to the bottom of that uh, sort of longer lodi top. And yeah, it's, it's gonna have nice straight, but not so much, so much like like a full skirt would. This is just half a half a circle. I've placed the fabric there so you can see, and I've already pinned the back waist darts and the bust darts. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly sew those darts in. Uh, you already know I start from the narrowest part, leave strands hanging so I can tie them up later. I don't reinforce the ends because it just makes it bulky and ugly. Then I'm going to stitch up those shoulder seams. I've pinned those really nicely. I'm going to just quickly sew those two together with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm really not used to this seam allowance, so I'm really struggling to keep that seam allowance because my brain just straightly goes to the one centimeter. Then I'm doing the same shoulder seams on the facings that I've cut out. So I'm doing them exactly, they should be exactly the same as my neck piece. I'm putting that aside and then I'm going to pin all that together, right sides together and stitch all the way around that neckline. I prioritize the neckline, as you know, I don't stay stitch. So the neckline is the first thing I finish on a garment, so then I don't have to worry about it. Um, I haven't had problems with naked, gaping necklines for not stay stitching. On the contrary, on the contrary, 
Then I'm going to snip all the way around, all those curves around the neckline as you do. And then um, I didn't show the understitching, but I did do that. <laughs> Quickly pressing as I go, pressing all the darts towards the outside, pressing the bust darts towards um, the floor. So there I have that stitched on and um, I've got them both together. I'm, I'm going to sew one side seam not the other side, just one side seam. And that is because I'm gonna uh, add on the flounce open, all the way open. So I'm just quickly doing that side seam and also I'm gonna overlock it at this point. So I want that seam to be finished so I can add on the flounce um, underneath. Then I add on the whole flounce all the way open. You can see I've pinned, it's a very long continuous stitch all the way. So um, yeah, quickly doing that. Now for this flounce, I'm doing my preferred one centimeter seam allowance because it's a hack I added into the pattern. So that's the seam allowance I allowed myself there. Um, makes it more comfortable for me and less bulky. Then I overlock that whole seam, it's very, very long. And then I sew the other side seam and I make sure the flounces match on both sides. I mean that, that stitch line, I make sure that it matches. So that's another continuous stitch and then overlocking. At this point, this is done. All you need to do is hem, basically. Um, so I just overlock on the bottom. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed watching all of that. And here is my dress. Um, I chose this like I do not know what this fabric is. I bought it in, in Bolivia somewhere. It is, it is slightly she, but not that she. Um, so here it is. Uh, it's a very simple dress, as you can see up to here. That is basically my mid hip length. And then at the bottom you have this flounce. So I made it like this because this is totally my style. I like this semi, not fitted, but not overly huge. And then I do like the flowiness of the skirt at the bottom. On the instructions, it said you had to use bias binding on the on the neckline and the neckline was higher. You know, I, I always change that and I prefer a facing. Now I did a facing and I ended the facing there with bias tape. Um, I did that all the way around. I think facings have a good result for me and I just do them. I like them, especially if I have enough fabric. Um, the, the armholes though, I won't do it with um, facings. I'll do it with bias tape. But you've already seen that. I do all my dresses the same. I always finish the armholes the same, you know. So um, I have filmed myself wearing this outside so you can see the fit. Now I wouldn't wear this dress uh, without the belt. I think uh, although I have the waist darts at the back and everything, I've, I've managed to get it not that wide at the waist. I think it still needs that belt to give it some shape. Um, nice flowy dress, I really like it. I think it would be really comfortable to wear. I wouldn't feel like tight and that I can't breathe or you know that I, that I have to be watching my posture the whole time you know so I think it's a really nice comfy dress uh, with a neckline that I like and I like everything about it really um now you can have a look at all the photos that we take outside I, I'm always trying to find different places but depends on the time of the day uh, I might not have the best lighting so sometimes I end up being in the same place anyway have a look at them you like seeing my dress I think this is a good pattern to have um, it has so many variations and you can hack it so many times because it's such a simple silhouette and the adjustments I make you know moving bust darts around and adding waist darts that's normal like I wouldn't say that's against the pattern that's just the way I like my clothes to fit you know so that is all for this video. Um, the next video is going to be um, all about the dress like your grandma challenge on Instagram. So I'll link that below and um, Mrs. Hughes. <laughs>
<laughs> or Tanya Mayo. Uh, she's the one that organizes it. And I missed out last year because I didn't have time. But this year I actually got photos of my grandmothers and I uh, created a piece that I'd like to share with you. So that will be the... So if you enjoyed watching this video, hit the thumbs up, like it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I invite you to. There's always lots of things to watch here. And that's all. Have fun sewing. Bye.